Lessons learned on stage and off. Act one, then to now. A pirate captain in search of a great hero whom he can oppose to become a great villain. A put together young man who along with his wife engages in an evening of drinks and games with a clashing older couple. A fierce tyrannical headmistress who frightens the life out of her pupils through extreme methods of discipline. What do these individuals have in common? Well, me. These are just some of the characters I've gotten to embody on stage. However, my theatrical experience has expanded to roles beyond the stage. I've always been creative. VHS tapes full of me performing as a toddler under the direction of my older sister. A suitcase full of puppets that I traveled around with. Awards, awards won for submitted works of art. So creative and right-brained that surely, at this point, the left side of my brain has been entirely consumed. One of my earliest glimpses into the world of theater was a production of Oliver. Though I didn't get cast in the title role, being a part of the ensemble allowed me to make new friends, learn choreography, eat tapioca for the first time, the <laughs> on-stage stand-in for gruel, and sing about food, glorious food. This is where I wanted to be. As an artist and a painter already, my first offstage role as a scenic artist made sense. Whether the set consists of stationary pieces on a fairly empty stage, or an elaborate world with many elements moving on and off from the wings, this is where the actors get to play, as well as the audience. As someone who hasn't always been a natural leader, the role of director is more surprising. But as a big picture thinker, this role was a natural transition. As a director, everyone looks to you for answers. Should we include this music here? Are these props accurate? Is this, this the dress you were envisioning? What do you think of the lighting for this scene? Though it can be overwhelming, it's collaborating with an actor to help them become their character that's most rewarding. As a designer, I get to work with a team to ensure that all aspects of the production are coming together visually and in harmony. If all of that sounds too out there, basically, I get to convince a group full of strangers to go along with my wacky vision for a piece that we then have to collectively convey to a room full of strangers in the dark. If successful, all involved leave having felt something. Hopefully not disappointed, but the feeling of being engaged and perhaps having learned something about themselves. Act two, the lessons. Lesson, teamwork. There's a deadline approaching and there will be butts and seats. Stay organized and proactive, collaborate. And how great is it to do with people who also look as terrified at an empty cage as you do? <laughs> Lesson, flexibility. There will inevitably be curveballs. Things will be cut, changed, or edited leading up to the very first curtain rising. Even in a show where things are supposed to go wrong, you will stay positive and move forward toward the shared common goal. Lesson. Acceptance. Words thrown at you like weird or loser won't hurt anymore. You found people who love these crazy parts of you. In fact, they'll encourage them. You work to create a safe space for them as they have done for you. Lesson. Family. You laugh, cry, and scream at each other. I'm talking on stage and off. These relationships go beyond the walls of the theater. Weddings, funerals, birthdays. These people will become your chosen. For what you've been missing, with them you will find completion. Lesson, loss. Costumes put away, lights turned off, set pieces torn down to eventually be reconstructed and painted over. Everything built up over months, stripped away in a ritual known as strike. But you're reminded that this is a natural occurrence. Lesson, grief. Even though you unexpectedly lose your number one fan, you continue your theatrical journey because it made them the most proud. This is fitting as the final words you spoke with your dad as you left that morning were about how you could get tickets to the show you were just cast in. Lesson, endure. You will find the best place for your grief is in this space you created. This accepting family will cry with you and give you reasons to laugh again. Here, you will heal. After all, as they say, the show, and ultimately life, must go on. Act three, reflection. 
All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his lifetime plays many parts. Shakespeare. I like the ephemeral thing about theater. Every performance is like a ghost. It's there, and then it's gone. Maggie Smith. Though I don't claim to measure up to the likes of Bill or Maggie, I have taken lessons from theater that might also be helpful for you. Laugh often, even at yourself. Don't sweat the small stuff. Push yourself and be challenged. Be present, the moment is there and then gone, so give it everything. Don't let others dim your passion for wanting to make it the best. Be brave, be bold. You never know that what that might push you to do. Maybe something like Dawn Fishnets for several productions of Rocky Horror. <laughs> Small details matter. Know it's okay to put your whole heart into something, creating something even if it's only temporary. So whether you're embodying a mother, a son, a boss, a student, or an entire family of wealthy, terrible people who each get hilariously killed off one by one, <laughs> celebrate all sides of yourself. Acknowledge your joy as well as your pain. In that, you'll grow in all the various roles you play. Just as theater is nothing without its audience, so is the world. If the world truly is a stage, what are we without its other players? Connect with and support each other. Find whatever it is that teaches you lessons. Draw from it through every stage of life until the final curtain falls.